Hi, I'm Kim Wilson. And I'm Natasha Marchevka. And this is Speechless. Speechless. Welcome to our behind the scenes take on real life and VO, where we share stories, resources, and unforgettable what? Opinions. And unforgettable opinions. <laughs> so listen, listen, guys, today I have to be incognito because <laughs> I have to remain completely subjective because our guest today is someone that I know very, very well. It is my husband. For those of you who are listening and not watching, Kim <laughs> <laughs> left the vocal booth and came back with a pair of sunglasses on to change her identity. Which I was not expecting. You have to remain completely subjective. I'm okay, not. listen. Right. My husband is a psychologist and he works with adults and teens uh, and families. And we he also, by the way, in his spare time, like what spare time? Uh, writes mu commercial music for commercials. But regardless, we invited him here today because we wanted to ask a psychologist to talk about how to stay healthy in this mentally challenging career uh, that can have tremendous up and ups and downs, as we all know. And uh, he was the first person I thought of, naturally. <laughs> Very good. Well, I'd like to thank our sponsors for today's episode, and that is Voice Overview, the business tracking um, and management system for voice actors, Positron, the ones that are helping us with proofing and editing our long form voiceover uh, very effectively, mm. and Studio Bricks, the makers of these beautiful studios. We have an exciting promotion from Voice Overview. If you stay to the end, we'll tell you how to enter to win one of three memberships for 2023. Get your year off going great. Stay to the end. Find out how you can enter to win. Okay, we're pretty giddy right now. We have a super fun guest. Uh, his name is Rick Wilson. It's actually Dr. Rick Wilson, and he is Kim's husband. But he's also um, so much more than that. And he's going to answer some existential questions for us today. But first, <laughs> Rick, what beverage did you bring to join us today on Speechless? Yeah. I have a... They're related. Uh, so... <laughs> They're related. I have a uh, tequila tonic. Okay. Okay. That's what mm -hmm. I made. I got I made that because that's your favorite. So I did it. Oh, sorry. oh that's Cheers. so sweet. Yeah, you didn't know. even know yeah. you made the same thing. I okay. Know. What are you no. what are you drinking? I have a mango lassie. Oh. <laughs> that I made wow. with um, well, I made with frozen mango and we had kefir in the fridge and honey and some cinnamon. So oh, Cheers. nice. Yum. Cheers. 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 Well, mm -hmm. thank you for being here, Rick. Yeah. Um we are just going to have a word from our sponsor and we'll be right back. Positron is the technology busy voice talent need. It literally cut our editing time in half. Positron overlays your script to your voiceover to ensure script accuracy. In moments, you'll discover pickups or a perfect read. Upload your script, upload your audio, and Positron does the rest. For audiobook proofing, this is a must. For e-learning and long-form narration, even one page of script, this process couldn't be easier. Positron ensures your narration is word perfect, so you can focus on your performance and delivery. Check out Positron.com or email hello at Positron.com for a free product demo. So, my darling Rick. Yes, <laughs> As you my know, darling Kim. <laughs> we are in a career that uh, not only requires skill, like most careers, but also requires mm -hmm. your talent. and. Um, it also requires us to put our most vulnerable selves out there every day. And with that comes a lot of rejection. Um, rejection of our talent, not just our skill. <laughs> and that's that can be a hard, uh, what is it, road to pull? Road to hoe. Road to road hoe. To, road to hoe. That, I was going to say rope to pull. <laughs> <laughs> that can be really hard. A, a really hard thing to to manage, and we just spoke with um, uh, a great actress who uh, 
is in animation for DreamWorks. Uh, her name is Allie Dixon, and she really struggles with the ups and downs, just like us. You know, just when you think, oh, I would love to be like her and have it made. She, she struggles with the same things we struggle with. So we were hoping that you could, I don't know, talk a little bit about staying healthy, having a healthy mindset, how to survive in a career like this, and how to deal with my crippling yeah. anxiety. <laughs> I have all the answers, right? <laughs> oh, thank God. We know you do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, my first thought as you're describing that is, is, is I probably every anything that any of us put our time and like energy into professionally is wrapped up in who we are as a person so it's whether well, there's unique bits of it in the voiceover business or maybe in, um that's true everywhere right we're always kind of navigating who we are and are we good enough or not good enough and then when you get success then it's like oh my god i could lose that and yes and that could be stressful um so yeah, you know, it, it's very, it's hard to grow up. That's mm, kind of yeah. my, and we we bring ourselves into our professional, our professional identities get tangled up into our, you know, just who we are as people. And so, so, so is it adulting? Yeah. Is it gr growing up? That's the answer. Oh, I no, it's not, that's like a simple maybe maybe a simple thing. I yeah, for sure. I I I think is life is all about being willing to grow and become aware of your blind spots. And you don't know them, of course, until you get into a new, like just think of maybe if, if anyone out as a parent, you don't really know what you're getting into with all the ups and downs of being a parent that takes you to places beyond what you ever imagined. And it, and it puts you in a space to, has the opportunity for profound growth, but often through great difficulty. Um, and this in our professional selves is just to me another version of of we'll meet some sort of challenge that we don't know um, until we get into it. And then it pre presents us with a part of ourself to explore, to be curious about. Mm. Um, so that's that comes to mind. <laughs> So, okay, Kim touched on, first of all, being an artist and it's you're mm -hmm. vulnerable, but also we're marketing ourselves every day. So we are putting ourselves out there. And most people, I think, know how challenging, challenging it is to get a job, to find a job, to put your resume out there, like for one job. But as right. voice actors, we're looking for several jobs a day. Right. So I'm wondering if your wisdom about how to help... I. Um, by the way, Rick helps um, teenagers a lot and teenagers might be looking for their first job. So what are some tips that you would give your clients about, you got this, you can do it because there's a lot of rejection in just getting a job at for sure. and we have to do it yeah. all the time. So are those tips transferable? What you got? Rick? Well, um, I think, I think my mind goes to zoom out way above that and and just to think about the question about what is healthy mm. um because if you can't answer that question um in the first place then all these other whether it's starbucks whether it's a voiceover audition whether it's um a, a marriage going on a date with someone then you really don't know what target to hit so i, I that to me is like the best starting place is like what's healthy what's healthy for you and that's a, a very individual question but there are some things that are kind of general about like what healthy is what does it look like what does it feel like we usually can tell i mean like it's like the, a physical part there's an emotional part um maybe like a spiritual part of, of what healthy might look like um and there's tons of research about that too which is really cool and um if you'll indulge me there's one study that that to me is like like a very kind of looked at this very question and it's called the Harvard study of adult development. And it was, the, it's the longest longitudinal study in existence. It's been going on for about 87 years and it started in 1937, I believe. And the research question is what keeps people happy and healthy as they age throughout their lifespan. And so they studied um, there, all the, all the people were 19 years old and they started, they, they picked a group of, um, 742 people, half were, were attended Harvard College, 
and half were from the poorest sections of Boston. Um, these were the poorest people lived in tenements, didn't have hot, hot and cold running water. And every year of their lives, they were fully interviewed. They had a full medical exam. They did blood work. They did MRIs of their head. They went into their homes and, and interviewed their families and their spouses. And, and it tracked their lives throughout their lives. Um, and as of 10 years ago, there were still 30, 30 of these original men who were still alive. Um, since that's expanded to include their families and, you know, almost 2,000. So there's almost 3,000 people in the study that's still going on. Oh. And the conclusion at the end of the study, the findings were, and again, the question is, what makes people happy and healthy as they go through life? The findings were that fame, wealth, and achievement were not correlated with health and happiness. And which is kind of a shocker because most of what we do in our life is, is tied to those things. And particularly, I would imagine, in, in a field that like where your audition in, in getting recognized is so like a daily thing, that sense of achievement, that sense of accomplishment, that sense of fame, getting your name out there, um, that's not correlated with happiness. Um, it often just puts us on what's called the hedonic treadmill that just keeps us chasing the next, the next, you know, big job audition, next big job. You know, Tom Brady famously said at the end of, um, after he won the, his very first Super Bowl, he goes, I thought there'd be, it would be more than this. Mm, right. Mm. And it's like always something else. So I don't care what job it is. If you can't figure out what healthy is, you know, whatever you do is just going to be an exercise in, in chasing something that really, just makes you frustrated. Um, that's not to say, you know, being really having a really good job and doing well at what you do is really important, but it really isn't wired to make make us happy. Um, what the study did find was that at, at the end of the day, what really makes people happy is having good relationships in their life, which is remarkable. It didn't matter your background, didn't matter if you're poor, or you're rich, if you have generally good relationships and friends and and a relatively connected family life that those people lived about 10 to 12 years longer than huh. people who didn't in the study and that's a huge finding right so wow. why would i why would i even talk about that stuff up here but i think it directly relates to remembering for all of us what actually does kind of feed us and i would argue that as wonderful as all your auditions are, what might be more meaningful for each of you is probably the connection you have together, the friendship you've you've developed doing this. You know, it's the people you know along the way that make it make it good. Well, the jobs are going to come and go. There's going to be times you're like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, but it's the connections with people, it's the connections with your family, connection with your friends that really anchor us. You know, in, in the kind of vicissitudes of life. Um, so that's, I don't know, that's an interesting tidbit, right? It is an interesting tidbit, wow. Rick. Um, that's gold. Well, and I'm a big picture thinker, so I love that idea and I'm immediately going to book some parties and stuff so we can build <laughs> some yeah. tighter bonds with friends. But, um, in terms of looking huh. for a job, yeah, your first answer was, well, is it healthy? So yeah. how, how can you connect those dots? I mean, getting, landing up your first job at Starbucks or somewhere else is different because this is, um, this is our career. This is our livelihood. Sure. But, um, what is the healthy piece? Where is it? Where do we keep ourselves in check mm -hmm. with this process? Yeah. Well, the problem is our brains suck. Um, and there's some great science to support that. Our brains are really wired for survival, and right. which is great. That keeps us that you know. So we're always alerted to to danger, to worry, to protecting you know um, ourselves from catastrophe. But the problem is, is that, that explains that, a lot, right, Kim? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. The problem is we're actually not in danger and not on the brink of catastrophe and it's hard to pull back from from the worry of whether it's the job um or whatever it is we're catastrophizing our we have this flight simulator our frontal cortex is really amazing at 
imagining everything that could go wrong. And that's what its job is. Um, its job is to imagine the, you know, oh my God, this could happen. Oh my gosh, this could happen. And it keeps us kind of alive. Um, it's really great um, to not get eaten by a saber-toothed tiger, but in our modern lives, it, it, it leads us astray from the things that really anchor us into happiness. And we don't prioritize it. It's really, it's really important to push ourselves professionally and to try to achieve at a high level, but we often push aside the actual things that make us happy in an effort to accomplish those tasks. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the challenge, right? Is how do you realize you're allowed to say no? And mm -hmm. um, which is really, really hard in a, in a business that you have to say yes to everything, that you have to be kind of on call 24 seven or pack the little kit in the car if you're going on vacation or so you can record remotely. Not that that's ever happened with us, right? <laughs> so how do you, how do you, if you don't know what healthy is, then it's hard to say no or put boundaries around right. um, your time um, around, um, I'll say this is important for me in the longevity of my career to, um, to make time to do the things that actually nurture your soul inside mm. so that you can withstand the ups and downs of, mm. of your, of the nature of your particular job, which is really stressful. It's mm -hmm. exciting, but it's stressful. Thank mm -hmm. you for acknowledging that for everyone. <laughs> Everyone's like, Oh, you have such a cool job. We do, but it's really stressful. Yeah. Right. It's, um, just, it's only as good as your last gig, right? Well, I have a bit of a different view that I'd love to share right now. Kim, would that be Ooh. okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> because Kim, share it. Kim mentions, you know, the rejection of auditioning is so stressful. Hmm. And while I agree, and it's a hustle and it's a lot of work, um, my attitude has always been, for some reason, I don't know why, I don't personalize in my job. So mm -hmm. if I don't, if I don't make the audition, like you sort of hear in um, on camera world you just weren't the right flavor oh. for that job. Mm -hmm. And so I know you have to be excellent in order to compete. If you're not excellent, that would be hard. You keep getting kicked down, kicked down, not winning anything. But once you get to a certain level and you're excellent at what you do, it's fine with me if I don't get the job after job <laughs> because they're not looking for me and other people are. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Sounds like a healthy mindset. I don't know how it happened. Yeah, I don't know either. You're the only um, actor I know who has that <laughs> mindset. So uh, step aside. But it's not, <laughs> but I, I am not healthy um, in how much work I take on. You know, um, I'm learning, definitely learning to say no to clients or to specific jobs because you're yeah. kind of done with things that Low budgets. aren't fulfilling financially or aren't fulfilling sure. in any way or asking for too much. But um, how about talking about daily practices that maintain, uh, what What are you doing, Rick, daily to maintain a healthy mindset? That's a good question. What do I do daily? I, yeah. And I, I would say it's probably, it, I wish I could say it was daily. That that would mm -hmm. be like, not mm -hmm. honest, but regularly I would, I, for me, I've found um, a meditation practice to be super, super helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and what's the name of that meditation practice so we can put it as a resource for folks? Yeah, I, I've connected, I utilize um, Sam Harris's app called Waking Up, um, which I really love. It has 10 or 20 minute daily meditations and and then a whole host of other things. But but that's that helps me um, kind of quiet the 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 clutter the noise in my head and kind of ground me to just being present um and that ebbs and flows sometimes i have a good string of days in a row doing that you know but over time it you know for many years i uh, you know i hit you know a few days a week sometimes uh, sometimes not um regular exercise that's probably the best thing anyone could do for their physical and mental health um you know um, one thing that Kim is amazing at is connecting with like friend, like everyone in our neighborhood is, yeah. thinks Kim is their best friend. So, you know, wherever we've gone for our whole lives, you know, like she's great at, at connection and, and that's something, you know, having regular 
dinners with people and we have we just have good friendships in our lives and that that's super um enriching you know try to work on parts of your self that need work um you know looking to grow instead of just saying oh i'm not like that you know having more of a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset mm. those are all important uh, things playing music does does that for me but everyone has to find their own kind of things that just that they can immerse themselves in and that nurture who they are um, that are independent from their professional identity because mm -hmm. our professional identities can come and go you know rise and fall but you know those other bits can be, kind of remain like a kind of a rudder under the ship of our of our sense mm -hmm. of self mm -hmm. Time is such a factor, you know, time and priorities totally. and being busy. And um, I posted something on Facebook recently about being busy and how it's not a badge and how you need to make time for things. By the mm -hmm. same token, we are busy. Some people <laughs> have four or five kids mm -hmm. or right. in terms of um, building an income, mm -hmm. uh, there is no pension over here. Like right. mm -hmm. I, today I live comfortably, but I hope 10 and 20 years from now when I'm still alive that I have money. Right. So to me, that is a force that keeps me going frenetically every day because you want to have something at the other right. side. So sometimes I get sure. frustrated with people, you know, who think they know better than me. <laughs> um about how I'm working too hard or whatever and I'm thinking well I have a really good life and I'm going to continue to and are you happy with where you are and is this where you want to be in 10 and 20 years uh that's just yeah not to judge yeah. but right sure I'm just taking care of myself and my family mm -hmm. Uh, of course. In a time where voiceover is a, we're in a gold rush of voiceover and there's a lot of work. So I, I think the point that you made of just knowing what's healthy and staying healthy mm -hmm. with some boundaries, mm. I think. Uh, so I think him, you know, focusing on health, healthy minds yep. and bodies for voice actors are something we need to keep talking about. For and sure. This is visit one, Rick. Yeah, so maybe we can up. make this a regular. <laughs> sure. <laughs> maybe our viewers Happy. might have some questions that they might want to <laughs> ask. We can, yeah. do, you know, ask Rick anything. Well, almost anything. <laughs> almost, no. Well, anything. I, have a, I have a provocative question for Rick Ooh. and Kim uh, that I will share after we go. Uh, ah, to, I'm going to gonna take a sip. Break. We're going to have a sponsor break and be right back. Voice talent. Be quiet. For us, quiet comes in the form of a studio bricks booth. Now, we've recorded in closets and nothing against closets, but with families and the need to raise our game, we both independently bought a studio bricks. I love my booth because when clients see it on Zoom, they know I'm the real deal. <laughs> but also, I feel more professional in it. And I like studio bricks because it's whisper quiet in my noisy neighborhood and also is gorgeous. Right? <laughs> I have a studio bricks one. And I have the voiceover edition. I want that. <laughs> Head over to studiobricks.com. World-class sound isolation booths, high-quality materials, less environmental burden. Hi there. I'm Danny States. I'm the founder of Voice Overview, and I just want to invite you to give us a try. We offer a 30-day free trial. We are the business tracking and management system designed by voice actors for voice actors. It's a great platform for you to manage and control your voiceover business. I'm scared. So you guys, you should be scared. No, you guys, you know, seem to have the perfect situation because here, Kim, you have a therapist at home. Um, most of us don't. <laughs> she rolls her eyes. <clears throat> Here's the thing, though. Not all of us have, and I'm not speaking for myself necessarily, but not all of us have um, partners who are therapists or healthy in their own right in mm -hmm. supporting us, you know, with what we do, because what we do is a bit off beat, off the beaten right. track path. Right. Yeah. Um, right. And so they don't understand. And then there's their own wellness that may or may not be happening. Mm -hmm. So how do you two cope with um, the day-to-day -day of 
you know, Kim, you you really wanted to know some answers from Rick, but you've been with him for, I don't know, 30 years. So what's my question? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> How does it work? It sounds like I, I'm a therapist. I'm a psychologist, but, you know, that's it, I'm not like Kim's psychologist. That, that For never goes sure. Well. No, if he and, if he ever in an argument, if he ever goes, if he ever says to me, well, I want to know how you like, t well, how do you feel about it? Oh, don't you go there. <laughs> yeah, that's it's just not work. how it works. But I think, you know, I think your question is a good one that 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 in a partnership, there's all kinds of varying degrees of healthy. And sometimes people aren't don't have a healthy partnership and or they're coupled with someone who has who who hasn't yet come to a way to kind of manage their own emotional self and that is a huge stress um you know um anyone who's in a family knows that it's stressful and if you're a parent that's profoundly stressful and oftentimes um people couple with someone who has almost the opposite parenting style which can often become a source of i mean this is almost universal so um, and, and that's true with Kim and I in some ways. Um, but I, I think, you know, working to, um, again, it's about learning to grow. It's like, oh, wow, I keep doing this same thing over and it's not helping. Uh, how do I take responsibility for what I can do? I can't take responsibility for Kim or no really partner can make their partner grow and change. You can try to do the best version of you mm -hmm. and and trust that this person you partner with hopefully will We'll do that there's not a guarantee um you know so i love that message because that's a message i believe so deeply i'm not i'm not here to change my husband and i've known that for i've we've been together for almost 30 years i've known that for like 29 years <laughs> Sure. I can't change him. This is my path. And if I evolve emotionally, that's my journey. And if right. he does his thing, I can't mm -hmm. change that. Right. Um, right. So right. to be healthy in oneself, I support everyone listening, watching, whatever. Take yeah. responsibility for yourself right. and yeah. be self-aware. That is the, right. those are the biggest messages of, of growth. And some people don't know even what growth is probably not listening to our podcast, but they don't know that that's a thing like growth. What is, you know, what is that? Yeah. So right. I want to end it here and thank you so much for your insight and depth. And we love real. You. Yeah. Oh. Real stuff. Real stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Real stuff. Yeah. I'm happy to. This, this is thank great. Thank you. Well, we want to have you both back. You, mm -hmm. I just want to say that both of you have such, I mean, if you think about what both of you have done is kind of women who are like independent contract i mean you are doing you've you've made something from nothing and i think that's really amazing and you're supporting each other and way to go girl power thank you thank you when he you're says welcome. making something from nothing i have to just explain what that means because someone who's not doesn't know what voiceover is although they may not be listening to this podcast as well voiceover <laughs> is a is a it's a service but it's not a yeah. service that is a normal thing like going to a restaurant service mm -hmm. and so we literally build our business from from, from scratch nothing. but right. yeah. from from scratch just buy a computer buy a microphone do the work there's all these things you don't necessarily get a, you don't get a degree from college uh, right. or even in business. So yeah, that's what, that's, yeah. Yeah. So awesome job. Thank you. Thank that you. is something about happiness. They'll feel like, like you've accomplished your own thing, which is really solid. So keep right. doing what you're doing. Then for me, I, I must add that that's where my self-esteem comes from. My business has grown and that's given me more and more self-esteem every year. Sure. Yes. Uh, right. And really I slowly, agree. slow business. Mm -hmm. And so it gave me lots of time to process and grow. And it has really uh, helped me to be the confident person that I am. Yeah. So to our listeners, if you haven't seen our um, our website at speechlessvo.com, you can sign up there for our newsletter where you will get the key takeaways before every show. So the show's there on Thursday and the Monday before, you'll see actually all the details for the mm -hmm. show. You won't need to um, take any notes. We need to take notes. And we also are now a podcast and a video podcast. So, you know, we're everywhere, really. Uh, so Spotify, thank you for Google. So Rick... 
are you must be familiar with our mantra since Kim has a t-shirt with it on. Maybe not. Oh, yes. oh you're familiar. Good. So mm -hmm. I'll start. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's be awesome now. Because we've got shit to do. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, people. If you want a chance to win one of three memberships from Voice Overview, please fill out the link here on YouTube or here on Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to or watching this video podcast, there is a Google link for you to fill out. This is valid only until the end of December, 2022. Get your year off to a great start and enter to win. This episode of Speechless is brought to you by... <laughs> Speechless.